Hi, this is Mike from Mike's Unboxing Reviews and How To, and today we're going to take a look at the slightly overhyped B450 Tomahawk Max. Keep watching to find out more. Okay, so today we're going to be taking a look at the B450 Tomahawk Max, and as I said in the very quick intro, this is possibly one of the most overhyped boards that has ever been for the AM4 platform. And a lot of you are probably already hating this video and stamping on that dislike button, but hear me out, there's a few reasons why I think this board, especially now in 2020, is very overhyped and there's certainly better options available. So what we're going to do is we're going to go through the usual process, going to go through a tour of the box, the product, what you get inside, the board itself, and then I'm going to give you some of my personal thoughts. And some of those may crop in as we go through the video as well. So first of all, with the packaging, it's the uh, usual kind of deal that we expect from NSI. Very uh, thematic with the reds, the blacks, the greys, etc, etc. One nice thing about this particular board is it is the Max Edition. So this has got the improved BIOS, which allows you to support more processors. Now, as it stands in the box, this currently supports first, second and third gen Ryzen processors, or 1000, 2000 and 3000 series, including pretty much all of the APUs as well. The only ones it doesn't support is the Athlon and Athlon X4 chips, which realistically you're not going to buy that sort of chip to run with this sort of board. But as we say, on the front, Ryzen 3000 desktop ready, B450 chipset and sports PCI Express Gen 3. So yeah, that's pretty much it for that side of the box. If we spin around to this side, it goes into more detail about the supported processors. Again, doesn't support the A series or Athlon X4, so as you can see by the cross there, but pretty much everything else is there catered for and will be uh, usable. Now this is a weird time to be actually doing this video because the Ryzen 4000 series is going to be imminently dropping and still, at the moment, we do not know what of those processors will be actually supported on the B450 chipset. So if you are considering looking at buying a 4000 series processor and you're looking around at the moment to see what boards to possibly get, then this video hopefully is going to give you another reason why you, really you shouldn't buy this one. Moving around onto the back, so we've got all the usual stuff, so B450 Tomalt Max, uh, support for Ryzen processors, we've got the extended heatsink design. Now the extended heatsink design on here, the Tomalt Max, this is part of the reason why this board actually does so well. It's got a relatively good VRM, but the way they've integrated the cooling for both the SOC and also the main CPU power it is actually a really good design. The height of this actual heatsink does catch a lot of airflow, so it does keep those VRMs nice and cool. Also, we've got the flash BIOS button. So if you are buying a processor, which currently isn't supported on this board, then you do have the option to use the BIOS flashback feature on a USB stick. Although again, depending on what comes out with the 4000 series, this may or may not work. Moving down, we've got the AMD Turbo USB. So it's got USB 3.2 Gen 2 ports, um, also Type-C ports built in as well, ready to go. No front mounted Type-C, only USB 3.0, standard kind of deal on those. But again, this is a slightly older board now, so we shouldn't really be expecting that. Moving on, we've got the Audio Boost. Now this board actually has the Realtek 892 chipset, which isn't great, but certainly is functional and gets the job done. Does support 7.1 audio straight out of the box. You've got all the connections on the back, so you've got no issues there. Not quite as nice as the 1200 chipset, which is more likely to be seen on newer boards, but again, does get the job done. Moving around to this side, we've got steel armor. So the actual PCI Express graphics card slot is reinforced with a chunk of steel. Unfortunately, we don't have anything else steel or protective like that. We've got no M.2 heatsink, which is a little bit of a shame. Again, okay, not really a deal breaker. It is actually in a very good position above the graphics card, so it will catch some of the airflow from the system fans on the front, should you have them. And realistically, you should. Also, it talks about the RGB, and it doesn't support addressable RGB. That is one of the biggest downsides of this particular board, and a lot of the MSI B450 boards. If you're looking for a B450 that actually does support addressable RGB, then you've got to be looking at the Carbon AC, which unfortunately is another tier price packet upwards. Also, again, this is another reason why, essentially, in 2020, you probably shouldn't be looking at this board for modern builds. You've got the Turbo M.2 slot, as uh, we mentioned just then. So, again, you can put M.2 drives in there, NVMEs, etc., etc. It is still PCI Express Gen 3, so it's not going to get the super rapid speeds that we all like to see, but still gets the job done. And one thing which we really, really do like to see on these types of boards is the Easy Debug LED. So you can plug in your processor, your RAM, graphics card, etc., etc., power it all up, and when it doesn't boot, you can find out from the LEDs what the problem is, or at least hopefully. 
So that is the packaging out of the way. Let's take a look at what we get actually inside the box. Now this I actually picked up as a used deal. There was a, uh, a local person who was trying to sell off some bits and pieces, so I did pick it up. That is the only reason why I've got this board. If I was looking to buy a brand new board now at full retail price, this board certainly would not be on my uh, shortlist at all, it, especially now, August 2020. It just makes no sense whatsoever. But having said that, if you can pick it up with a really, really good price, and luckily I did, this does make some sense and also is then highly competitive with other boards such as the A320s and some of the other cheaper boards on the market. Anyway, what do we get in the box? So we get a thank you for choosing MSI product, quick installation guide, there's an MSI motherboard installation DVD. There is a true gaming leaflet, which tells you about other devices which you can buy from MSI. There is a true gaming logo badge, a single M.2 screw. Doesn't that look lonely in there? A pair of SATA connectors, actually a rather nice AO shield. Not a fixed one, but certainly has done a little bit more than the usual kind of just plain steel like we got on the back there. So yeah, that does look pretty nice and actually it does go into depth and tell you exactly what each port is. So if you're not entirely literate on what a PC is or where to connect things, this will give you a fighting chance at least. And we also get a motherboard manual, which is actually becoming more and more of a kind of luxury these days. A lot of them tend to be on QR codes, that kind of thing. So nice to see that you still get a manual in the box. And last of all, we get the motherboard itself. And actually, as far as motherboards go, I think this one looks really, really nice. It's got a really kind of muted tonal quality to it. So it's mostly blacks, a few hints of white on there, and a few hints of gray, but overall a very muted setup. So this should fit in with pretty much any colorful build. Although again, this does only support 12 volt RGB. So that is basically color cycling through reds, greens, blues, etc., etc., or you can set it obviously to a static color, but there is no support on this board whatsoever for any form of addressable RGB. So if you want the lights where they change all the way through, then this isn't gonna work for you and you should definitely look elsewhere. And in fact, I would say previously on the video I did for the B550, the VDH Wi-Fi, that is a fantastic alternative to this and has a lot of newer features and you can check it out up here. Anyway, as I said, really nice looking board and yeah, for me it ticks all the right boxes and I think that was part of its major appeal. It actually looks like a really nice board. There's no odd colours or anything going on here so it will fit into the majority of builds, especially those ones with tempered glass panels where you can see inside and see what's going on. But anyway, let's go through and see what connectors we've got. So in this top corner we've got our 8-pin CPU connector. Next to that we've got this nice Arsenal Gaming heatsink over the SOC VRM. Also, obviously, the massive chunk of metal we've got here, the Tom Holt Max, over the main VRM, which again, is part and parcel of why this board actually does so well. It's only technically a four plus two phase VRM, and that is using on semiconductors, the 4029s on the high side, 4024s on the low side. But yeah, you've got four sections here, two sections here, so technically it's a four plus two, but most people would regard this as being a four phase VRM. Got the CPU socket itself, so again, AM4 support, pretty much most of the processors that are on the market now, all the way up to the 3950X, and this will have a decent stab at overclocking on that as well. So if you are maybe thinking of that, well, if you're getting a 3950X, really, you shouldn't be looking at this board. But if you've already got this board and you're looking for an in-place upgrade and you just want to swap out a processor, that is possible. And again, if you're watching this with the view to picking up a second-hand bargain, then of course, yes, this is definitely worth looking at if the price is right. At the moment in the UK, this will retail anywhere between the 120 to 130 mark, sometimes slightly less, sometimes slightly more, COVID times, etc. things are all gone a bit crazy. But this had an original retail release price of around about 100 pounds, 120 pounds, so it's not that far off. But having said that, there are better alternatives on the market. Like I've said before, the B550 VDH Pro Wi-Fi is a really good alternative, and there's tons and tons of the B550 boards on there which are similar sort of price and will give you similar, if not better performance. So obviously do take it in mind. Second hand prices, realistically on this, you would be looking at anywhere between 50 and 80 pounds for a good fully featured working board with all the accessories. If you pick one up, maybe just the board itself with no IO shield, yeah, again, 40, 50 pounds would be my recommendations. Although looking on eBay, they do sell for actually considerably more than that. And some of these actually go second hand for around about 130, 140 pounds, which is pretty insane. But just pay attention to what you're looking at and what you're spending. You shouldn't be spending that sort of money on this board, especially now in 2020. 
Anyway, moving on, so we've got four RAM slots, and this supports up to 128 gigs of RAM. The previous version, the standard Tomahawks, only supported up to 64 gigs, so that is a slight improvement, and pretty much the only other improvement on this board, other than the actual BIOS flashback. At the top here, we've got an RGB connector, and again, it's 12 volt RGB, so you've got 12 volt header, R and G and B, no addressable. You've got the water pump fan here, also you've got a system fan as well in the same place, so fan-wise, this board actually does have a lot of options covered especially if you're looking at water cooling, that sort of stuff, really handy to have. And as always with MSI boards, all of the fan headers are configurable, so you can set them to either auto, DC voltage, PWM voltage, or combinations thereof. Moving on a little bit further, we've got our debug LEDs, which are here just next to the power connector. Again, really handy, really useful to have, and hopefully I'll show some B-roll shots of that actually in use. 24-pin power connector, which is pretty much standard these days, and also we've got another system fan header. Moving across, we've got our PCI Express Gen 3 times 4 slot for SSDs, M.2 drives, NVMEs, etc. This is shared with the CPU. Moving down, we've got our PCI Express Gen 3 times 16 slot, fully wired, and also we've got that steel support as well. All the rest of the PCI Express is all PCI Express Gen 2, so we've got a times 1 slot, times 1 slot. This is actually only wired as a times 4 slot rather than a times 8 or times 16. So if you are looking at doing SLI or Crossfire, that kind of stuff, do bear that in mind. And finally, the last slot at the bottom is PCI Express Gen 2 times 1. Moving back across, we've got our heatsink here for the B450 chipset, and also you've got four SATA ports there, which all run off of that chipset. Moving down a little bit further, we've got another two SATA ports. Now, these two SATA ports are running from the processor. So if you do plug in a M.2 drive into this slot here, you then lose both of these slots. Okay. That is part and parcel of the B450 chipset. Moving down to the bottom I.O. connectors, so we've got a USB 3.0 port, USB 2.0, another USB 2.0, then you've got your front panel connector for your reset, hard drive LEDs, all those kinds of things. Just above that, you've got four pins for mounting a BIOS speaker, that kind of thing. Also then, you've got your trusted platform module header, and then next to that is a COM port, another system fan header, another RGB header, again, 12 volt RGB only, and then you've got your HD audio front panel connector. Moving back up slightly, we've got our BIOS battery and the CMOS reset is right next to the battery, which is in a quite a nice place. So if you have tried to do any overclocking with your RAM, etc., and it hasn't worked out well, then you can either remove the battery and short that out without having to remove the graphics card in most cases. So that's uh, pretty decent. And you may well have to reset the BIOS. Because of this, the B450 chipset, you are limited on memory speeds. So I've actually tried this with a first generation Ryzen 1700X and trying to get even just 3600 RAM working, didn't want to know it. Um, the XMP profile wouldn't load at all, so I had to reset it. So it just defaulted back to the 26666, um, yeah, which is not ideal. So that is another thing to bear in mind if you are looking at a slightly older B450 board, that is the processor you're using and also the memory you want to use with it. If you're looking at maybe future-proofing your investment and you're looking for a third generation Ryzen processor or 3000 series and some faster 3600 RAM, your results are going to vary based on the chipset. Generally, 1000 and 2000 series, you're going to be limited to about 3200, maybe 3400 if you're lucky. If you go for a 3000 series, chances are 3600, maybe 3733, you should be fine. Although technically this board will support up to 4133 in overclock. But again, your mileage will vary depending on your chip and your memory. So that's it for the connectivity on the board itself. Let's take a look at the rear IO. So we've got our BIOS flashback button which is nice and easy to use. Also, if you want to use it, just plug in the USB stick, formatted either FAT32 or NTFS with the MSI BIOS and stick it into that slot there, the bottom one, press the button and you can flash the BIOS. If you want to see how that's all done, you can click on the video link up here and check that out for yourselves. But essentially you've got two USB 2.0 ports, keyboard mouse combo port, DVI-D, HDMI, USB 3.1 Gen 2, also another USB Gen 3.1 Type A connector and also a Type C connector. Moving up to the top, we've got the Gigabit LAN, which is the Realtek 8111H chip, which isn't brilliant, but certainly does get the job done. Would have been nice to have seen an Intel platform there, but again, this is relatively budget oriented motherboard, even though it isn't, but it is. The way the uh, B450 platform is, it is designed to be a step down from obviously the higher models like X470, that kind of thing. Anyway, moving on, so this is another one of my personal hates, I dislike this immensely, and that is all of these connectors on the back panel being the black 
color with the red in the middle. Obviously the red one makes sense because that sticks out like a sore thumb, but the rest of them for some people, if they've got a headset or whatever the case may be, maybe a 7.1 setup on 3.1 jacks, you're hunting around to work out which one it is. For my money, personally, it'd be a lot easier for these to be just the normal standard color coding. But again, let me know what you think about that in the comments section below. And actually, before we go too further, just referring back to the back plate, it does actually tell you on the back plate which one is which. So yeah, it's not immediately obvious from the color, but it is printed there clearly. So yeah. So without being too much of a dick, it is there easily available if you do need it. So there we go. That is the MSI B450 Tom Hawk Max. Again, possibly one of the most hype boards I've ever known. And I wouldn't have bought it. I really wouldn't have bought it unless it was a really, really good deal. I picked it up for a, a fantastic deal and I have tested it and it all seems to work. So it wasn't one of those deals which uh, falls flat. Not too bad at all. Again, if you're buying a first generation or second generation type Ryzen processor, 1000 or 2000 series, this board is absolutely fine, but I certainly really wouldn't recommend it for a 3000. And again, if you're looking for future proofing for the 4000 upcoming series, again, there are much, much better options on the market. And also you'll be failing to take advantage of some of the advantages of PCI Express Gen 4, which this board clearly cannot support. So let me know what you think about this board in the comments. Would you buy one as a used bargain now? Would you buy one if it was brand new on the market? I don't think there's many people that will, but if you're considering it, then do please let me know. I am nonetheless going to be doing a build in this and it'll probably be maybe a Ryzen 5 2600, that kind of thing. It really does upset me that the fact there isn't addressable RGB, which is a really sad thing to say. But these days, most cases, especially if you're trying to sell a used system on the market, people do love their RGB bling. And if you just have a static color, yes, it does look quite nice, but people do expect to see all those random colors going on. It is possible you can get around it by just having the RGB and just forget it on the board and just run it off a separate controller. But then why have an RGB controller anyway? As you can probably guess, I don't particularly like this board very much, so we'll pretty much leave it there before I start ranting too much. So I've been Mike, this is Mike's Unboxing Reviews on How To, and hopefully we'll catch you in the very next video. Thanks for watching.